Hi all, welcome back to the show and welcome to the series of subject videos under network analysis subject or network theory subject. Okay, in today's video, this one of an important concept, Kirchhoff's law. Kirchhoff's law is divided into Kirchhoff voltage law and Kirchhoff current law. In today's video, you will be seeing Kirchhoff's voltage law which is called as KVL or mesh analysis or loop analysis. Okay, they will be giving a uh, question like finding, uh, using mesh analysis or using loop analysis, uh, find the currents in the circuit. Okay, so we know KVL is the principle is the algebraic sum of all the voltage equal to zero. Okay, in this video you will be seeing the problem, how to do and what are the steps involved. It is very easy to uh, follow it. So let us do a problem on Kirchhoff's voltage law. I have taken a very simple problem for basic understanding. Okay, so here uh, I have taken a voltage source and uh, there are two voltage sources and there are three resistors and there is one resistor which is dividing the entire circuit in two halves. Okay, so this is dividing the entire two halves. This is one side and this is the other side. Can you see that? Okay, now that resistor has to be treated separately. Okay, I will tell you how. So, uh, initially, if the voltage source are given like this, the longest line which is denoted will be taken as positive and the shortest will be negative. So, this sign has been given. Now, we have to take the loop current. Okay, so listen carefully. When there are two loops, loop 1 and loop 2, this is taken as loop 1 and this is taken as loop 2. Okay, when the first loop, if I assume current always goes from positive to negative, okay, I will take the current direction this way. And I take loop 1 where the current in loop 1 is I1. Okay, for very easy method and easy understanding and to do the problem very easily, what I do is I'll follow the same loop in the other, same loop direction in the second loop also. I2. Okay, don't uh, see the voltage source here, you'll get confused. Okay, if you follow the first loop direction, you follow the first loop direction only to the second loop also. So, both of them are in the same direction now. Okay. But, you can see that they are in the same direction, but what is really happening, I will let you know. So, here, I1 is starting like this. Okay. From minus, it jumped to plus. From, it is leaving plus. Okay. It came here and came at 2, 4 ohm resistor. Okay. So, I1 is flowing in this direction. Okay, it entered, it, uh, so when it enters, it becomes plus, when it leaves, it becomes minus. Because whenever some current is entering a resistor, it is always plus, it is having a positive potential. But when it passes this resistor, what happens? Resistor has a property uh, to oppose the current, so current decreases, so it becomes minus. So when it leaves, it becomes minus. So when I1 comes here and I1 comes here, this becomes plus and when it leaves, it becomes minus. Okay, now what happens? I will take another pen and I will show you how it is. See here, direction is coming from positive to negative. So here it is minus to plus. Here it is positive to negative. See current started positive, left at negative. It came here. So this is plus, this is minus. Okay. It entered here. I2 entered here. See, I2 is in opposite direction to I1 in the 4 ohms. So 4 ohms. One is passing like this, the other is passing like this, okay. And uh, it becomes plus here, becomes minus here and it comes like this. So for the 4 ohms resistor which is in between, there are two currents which I1 is flowing in the forward direction and I2 is for, uh, flowing in the reverse direction. This is to be noted, okay. I will tell you how to write in very simple manner this. Now I will write for loop 1. So we need to find the currents in, uh, uh, we need to find the currents in the circuit. What currents are flowing? I1 and I2. So our problem is we need to find I1 and I2 currents. Okay. For I have to write loop 1 equation. Loop 1 equation C. Your current is flowing like this. Okay. So it is flowing in this direction. So to make it more clear, it is flowing in this direction like this. Okay. See this is opposing this one. So when I take the first loop. I will draw it here, this 12 ohms as it, 12 ohms as it is, okay. then there is a resistor here, I have taken only the first loop, so this 3 ohms, this is 4 ohms, see I1 is flowing in this way, okay. anyway, 
is flowing in this way. So I1 is flowing in this way. So this becomes plus and it becomes minus. In the same 4 ohms, I need to consider I2 also. I don't take these 5 volts and 2 ohms, but I will consider I2 because when I consider the loop 1, your 12 volts and 3 ohms belongs to loop 1 separately, but 4 ohms is in between the 2 loops. So I have to consider this one also. See, I2 is flowing in the reverse direction. Okay. So how to write this one? See now, whatever leaving, see when the current is entering, if in this way, the current entered minus and left this plus. Okay. So when it is leaving plus, I will take the plus into consideration, plus 12. Because I need to write, uh, before that I will tell you, I need to write the voltages at here, here, here. Because according to the principle, the algebraic sum of all the voltage is equal to 0. So let me tell that. I have to write the voltage at 12 volts, which is already given. Plus, I need to write the voltage at 4 ohms resistor and I need to write the voltage at 3 ohms resistor and that should be equal to 0. This is the principle of a Kirchhoff voltage law. Now, for 12 volts, I have to write like, the flow is like this. So, current, see, the flow is like this. It is going like this. So, current entered plus and left this, current entered this minus and left this plus, right? So, this plus has to be considered. Plus, 12. Because voltage source is directly given 12, so there is no need to write. Plus, voltage source at 4 ohms. According to Ohm's law, what is Ohm's law? V is equal to I into R. So, we need to write I R into configuration. So, for 4 ohms, what is the resistance? Resistance is 4. It doesn't change. What is I? See, there are two currents which are flowing in the 4 ohms. I1 is flowing in the forward direction. I2 is flowing in the reverse direction. See. I1 is flowing like this, I2 is flowing like this, in the reverse direction. So, it is like I1 minus I2. Now, you ha can have a doubt why you have taken I1 first. Because we are writing loop 1, so I1 has to be given priority. Now, what is this? Current entered this, so it is plus. When it is leaving, it becomes minus because some of the current will be dissipated. So, this becomes minus sign. Okay, plus of. I am taking the voltage at 3 ohms is I into R. What is R? 3. What is I? I is exclusively only I1 because I1 is flowing in this 3 ohms. There is no other current which is flowing. So, this is I1. And the uh, current enters plus and leaves at minus. So, this is minus. So, you can directly say that whenever a current is entering a resistor, Okay, it is always plus and when it is leaving, definitely we take this into consideration and it becomes minus because current is being dissipated. It is being opposed actually. So, I will do this again with a different pen. So, this is like 12 minus 4 I1 minus I2 minus 3 I1. So, so this is the equation of it. Okay, you want to solve this? Solve it, solve this. Minus 4i1 plus 4i2 minus 3i1 is equal to 0. I will continue this here. Very good. So, 4i1 and 3i1, this becomes 12 minus 7i1 plus 4i2 is equal to 0. So, I will send this to the other side. So, 7i1 plus 4i2 is equal to 12, minus 12. I will divide the entire thing with minus. So, this becomes plus. So, plus 7 I1 or you can leave it like this as it is. Okay. So, at last what equation we got? Minus 7 I1 plus 4 I2 is equal to minus 1. This is taken as equation. Okay. Now, for loop 2. For loop 2, let us draw the diagram again. So, I will be considering only this. Okay. So, I will take this 4 ohms, this 5 volts, and this, this 5 volts plus minus. So, current is flowing in this direction, in opposite way. This is 2 ohms. And so, for 4 ohms, we need to consider I1 also, which is flowing in the opposite direction. So, this I1, this root. Okay. So, when is current is flowing like this? Okay, this becomes plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay, for I2 exclusively I am asking. Okay, now to write an equation, we need to write the voltage source at 5 volts, voltage at 2 ohms, voltage at 4 ohms. Okay, so 
will write that one. So voltage at 5 also voltage source plus voltage at 2 ohm resistor plus voltage at 4 ohm resistor. Now voltage at 5 was what is happening here? See current is passing like this. So it entered at plus and left at minus. So you have to take the minus and consideration when it is leaving. So this becomes minus 5. When it enters 2 ohms resistor. Okay here it is I into R. So R is 2. I is I2. Okay what was the sign? Okay it is leaving. So it is minus sign. Okay, and here voltage at 4 ohms and I into R condition again. R is always 4. What is I? I is like, see, they are in the opposite direction. One is, I1 is coming in the forward, I2 is coming in the reverse. So, you have to write I2 minus I1. Now, why I have written I2 here and why I have written I1 here? Because when I am taking loop 2, I2 is taken into consideration. And your minus sign is minus because whenever current leaves the resistor, it becomes minus so let us solve this. Minus 2 I2. When you are solving, please be very careful with the sign. One sign change will definitely make you lose the problem. So this is minus 6 I2 plus 4 I1 is equal to. If I want to rearrange uh, and send this phi to other side, what happens here? 4 I1 minus 6 I2. When I send this one to other side, okay, this becomes plus 5. So, 4 I1 minus 6 I2 is equal to 5 is your second equation. These are the two equations what we do. Okay. Now, try to uh, write the two equations in another paper. I'll write here. So, loop 1 equation is minus 7 I1 plus 4 i2 is equal to minus 12 which is equation 1 and for loop 2 the equation is 4 i1 minus 6 i2 is equal to 5 is the second equation. Okay. Now we have to solve so that we get the currents i1 and i2. Now to solve this I will write again plus 4 i2 is equal to minus 12. Minus 6 I2 is equal to 5. Now to do this, uh, we know very simple method. To cancel this I1, both should be of the same coefficient. Now what I have to do is, I will multiply this equation with 4 and this equation with 7. So what will happen? 4, if it is multiplied, this becomes minus 28 I1 plus 16 I2 is equal to 4 pulses minus 40. Okay, now it becomes 7. 28 I1. 7642 42 I2 is equal to 7 pi is 35. Now if you solve it, these get cancelled because minus 28 plus 20 cancel. So this is minus 26 I2 is equal to minus 13. The 13, 13 will go, minus minus will go away. So I2 is equal to 13 by 26, this is equal to 1 by 2, which has become 0 0.5. So I2 is equal to 0 0.5. Now we got the current I2 is 0 0.5. So once we get one current, what we do is we substitute I2 is equal to 0 0.5 <coughs> in equation 2. Let us substitute in equation 2. So your equation 2 is 4 I1 minus 6 I2 is equal to 5. So if I substitute 4 I1 minus 6 into 0 0.5 is equal to 5. So 4 I1, this is 3 is equal to 5. So 4 I1 is equal to 8 which implies I1 is equal to 8 by 4 which implies I1 is equal to 2. So we got two currents where after solving we get I1 is equal to 2 amps and I2 is equal to 0. This is a simple way of solving the Kitsos voltage law and finding the current. Okay? And remember both the directions I have to consider as a same because I have considered loop one direction and applied the same direction in the other loop also and I have done it. See, now you have to see that the currents are flowing in the opposite direction. That is very important. They are colliding. One current is coming like this, other current is coming like this. 
So in here we get I1 minus I2, difference of both the currents. But you take when loop 1, you have to take I1 as priority. When you write in loop 2, you have to take I2 as priority. If this misses, okay, your entire sum will go away. Keep watching. Thank you.